Right, you're only getting five minutes tonight to get your feet under the table. Why? Because we've got lots to talk about. I mentioned I was in PR, is I was working with a team, a company, uh, in London, and we were working on Expo 98. And Expo 98 was being held in Lisbon. So Expo moves around every four years and it sort of regenerates the city that they, they go to. It had been in Canada somewhere and then it was going to Lisbon in in Portugal in 98. So in 96, I was at, at, the, at the forefront and I was brought in as the radio expert to to because to, they wanted to create individual radio stations for individual countries that attended Expo. Pretty big project. Um, and I sort of, uh, once I got, we got the dossier to presentation stage and uh, the head of the company went across to Portugal, I kind of uh, left it. But so I was part of the team putting together a bid to facilitate Radio and Communications Expo 98. I looked at some of the famous people that might have had any kind of connection with Portugal so that we could get an interview and we could promos together and it would, it would, they would, the more famous, the better. And I thought about Cliff Richard and he had a kind of had a vineyard in Portugal. And I thought, no, he's not really my style. He's not really. Who can we go to? Didn't Bobby Robson manage Porto, the football side? Yeah. I'll go and talk to Bobby Robson. And that's another story for another night. And then I thought, hang on a second. Wasn't because in 96, I think. Um, so Bobby Charlton had only been knighted. Was it 94? So just before. And the Euros had taken place and we'd had quite a good Euro. So I just thought, that's it, Bobby Charlton. I'll go and, I'll go and speak to Sir Bobby Charlton. So I, I rang around some of my contacts and said, have you got any have you got any contacts for Sir Bobby Charlton? Now, this was not when everybody had email. This was not when you had easy access via X or formerly known as Twitter or social media. None of that malarkey. No, it was, did you have the telephone number? If you didn't have the telephone number, you couldn't get hold of them. So I thought, do you know, I'll ring Manchester United. Um, he's, you know, he's an ambassador for the club. He's an ambassador for football worldwide. He's revered worldwide. He's possibly the best known Englishman in the world after King or Queen or Prince of Wales ever. So I thought, I'll just, I'll fly a kite and I'll see if Manchester United will, um, will give me his number. And again, this was before data protection, GDPR and stuff. So I rang the club and the club were lovely. They were brilliant. And I said, look, this is, this is who I am. This is what I'd like to do. Just want to do a quick 10 minute interview with Sir Bobby Robson. Sir Bobby Robson, Sir Bobby Robson, Sir Bobby Robson. And it's just about his, his connections with Eusebio, he played against Benfica in the late 60s in the European Cup. And uh, England played Portugal in the semi-final of the 1966 World Cup. Two World Wars. One World Cup. So I, I said to them, you know, this is what I'm trying to do. I can give you my number if you want to ring me back to make sure I am who I say I am. And bless them, they did. They rang me back and went, right, OK, uh, leave it with us. Can't give you any guarantees, but leave it with us. And about two hours later, they must have rang Sir Bobby Charlton at home. And they rang me back and said, um, we've spoken to Sir Bobby Charlton. He's happy for you to have his telephone number, his home telephone number. If you ring him within the next 60 minutes, he will be there and he's happy to talk to you. And I was like, what? Really? Sir Bobby Charlton? And he'd, I mean, what a life Sir Bobby Charlton had. I mean, I know that him and his brother Jackie, and I played cricket with uh, with Jackie for the Lord's Taverners. That's another story for another night. Um, and... I don't know whether you're aware of Busby Babes and whether um, the plane crash that involved Sir Bobby and they stopped at Munich to refuel. Um, all the team was on board and there was a, a horrible, horrible, horrible plane crash. And the thing was, God, if you wish, or fate, or however you deem it, it was on Sir Bobby's side because there was two other players that wanted to swap seats. They wanted to be further back in the plane for safety, they said, and they swapped seats with Sir Bobby. If Sir Bobby hadn't swapped seats, he wouldn't have been around. Wouldn't have been around for the World Cup, wouldn't have been around for the 62 World Cup, 66, 70. Uh, he wouldn't have been around. Busby Babes, it was a, 
many lives lost. But Sir Bobby's was saved by one of the other players literally getting hold of him and the guy that he was sitting next to by their belt buckles and dragging them out of the plane. Um, and, yeah, have we got any Manchester United fans uh, commenting this evening? Because I'd love to know your thoughts. But, as I say, with all this background, there were the European Cup winners against Benfica. I'm sure George Best scored a goal. I think Sir Bobby might have scored a goal. European Cup in the 60s, I mean. The first English side to win the European Cup. I know Forrest did it on the trot two years in the late 70s, but uh, 79 and 80. But back end of the 60s, 6th of Feb, 58. Was that the, the date of the crash, Terry? And... The plane just clipped the end of the runway. The wing went into a into a building. It was just, it was awful. It was awful. But I'll give you a, a quote because, um, you know, in the 66 World Cup, England semi-final, 2-1 against Portugal, Eusebio played. And Sir Bobby Charlton paid tribute to Eusebio, describing the former Portugal and Benfica striker as one of the finest players I've ever had the privilege to play against. So Sir Bobby and... Eusebio were good friends, good mates. And I thought, that's what I need. I just, you know, the, the Portuguese would, would love the fact that the greatest living Englishman, Sir Bobby Charlton, um, had a, a dear, dear friend in Eusebio. So I had Sir Bobby's home telephone number. And I, it's a bit like, you know, when something bizarre happens and you, it just feels surreal. It was that, it was if I was floating around and it just didn't feel real. It just didn't feel real. And uh, Junior Stevens, I have a, a Kevin Keegan story because obviously I was working for Fayed uh, back into the 90s when Kevin Keegan was managing Fulham with Arthur Cox. So I do have a story for another night. And so I called at the allotted time and I'm sat in a radio studio in, in the PR company in London. And Sir Bobby Charlton answered the phone. It was, it was Sir Bobby Charlton answering the phone, which really freaked me out. I mean, you know, I'm, a, I'm just a daft lad from the Northeast, so I'm, I'm seeing Sir Bobby Charlton on the telly, playing footy in Europe, World Cup winners, everything. So I was a bit, I was a bit fanboy-ish. But, you know, professionalism always kicks in. So you've just got to get on with it. So, so Bobby was knighted in 94 for his services as an ambassador for football. And at the time, when, when everybody was sort of calling him, he's a, uh, he's a boy from Ashington. Sorry, um, was it Ambleside or Ashington? Um, and he, he, was just, he was just one of us. He was just a man on the street. Just call me Bobby. And I was like, are you sure, Sir Bobby? We, we haven't started the interview yet, but, you know, however you'd like to be addressed, he said, oh, just call me Bobby, it's fine. So we spent about, so the interview was supposed to last 10 minutes. He didn't want it to finish, and I didn't want it to finish, so it lasted about half an hour. And I've still got the um, the master tape and the edited version uh, that we kind of submitted for the Expo um, submission. And it was just, honestly, it's one of the, the best experiences of my life. We spent over half an hour chatting about Eusebio, the World Cup semi-final, the World Cup final. How does it feel to win the World Cup, Sir Bobby? Oh, it was brilliant. I mean, he was so understated and, and very, I would use the word laconic, he was just very laid back and very understated and, and very, very humble, wonderfully humble. Um, and he spoke about his, his love and friendship with the Portuguese and his footballing memories with Benfica and Eusebio. And he literally never broke a sweat. It was, I mean, he was so adept. He'd, he, you know, for decades he'd been um, in the media spotlight and he was just, I would like to think that all Englishmen were as quintessentially English as Sir Bobby. He was just a gentleman through and through, never broke sweat, answered, answered each and every question with great humour and humility and told great stories. He didn't, 
you know, like today in the mainstream media, you ask somebody a question, mainly politicians, but if you ask somebody a question, they kind of divert it. They've all been media trained to within an inch of their lives. And so Bobby Charlton was just authentic. He was real. He was just you and I but knew very famous people and had had a tremendous and wonderful life. And I will never forget, I, I, how would I encapsulate the, the day that I spoke to Sir Bobby Charlton? I would say that he was a very kind gentleman. He was utter class, in my view, in my personal experience. And he gave me, as a, as a bit of a starstruck fanboy, football fan, he gave me a wonderful opportunity and a memory that I can regale people with and a, and a chance to speak to a hero, one of the class of 66, the lads from 66, the World Cup winners, the boys of 66. And, and talking to you now, it literally sends the hairs on the back of my neck standing. Wonderful, wonderful. So my memory of Sir Bobby Charlton, he, he not only said yes to the interview when he didn't have to, he said yes to Manchester United, in them handing out his telephone number when he didn't have to. He agreed to 10 minutes and 10 minutes over half an hour. I think it was closer to 40 minutes. And he just did that out of the goodness of his heart. What a man, what a gentleman. Utter class, Bobby Charlton. So Bobby Charlton, RIP. But I also want to move on to something slightly more serious involving Sir Bobby and I, and I hope you don't mind me mentioning this but when I was doing research for tonight's live um, I didn't know that out of the boys of 66 five have gone with dementia I didn't know that and they're saying that um, they think it's heading the ball because you know back in the day back in the 50s and 60s I mean it was like rock it was leather it was so it was it was just like rock and a lot of footballers seemingly are dying from dementia so out of the the boys of 66 and and please if you don't mind we've got nearly uh, 142 people watching under 50 likes so please smash the likes while i continue to to discuss this but i know uh, i've i've met and spoken with and played cricket with Jackie Charlton for the Lords Taverners Nobby Styles his son John is is trying to create awareness around dementia and footballers. So you've got Nobby Styles, now sadly Sir Bobby Charlton, Martin Peters, Ray Wilson and Jackie Charlton. Five of the 11 have gone with dementia. And, and nobody's really... Did Alan Sugar make a documentary about it, about um, dementia and footballers? Because it, it was... that was, Finding that out today, not only was it a revelation, but was also quite, quite impactful. Because um, I never knew that. And the only one of the team that's left, some have gone with cancer, five have gone with dementia. But the only one that's left is the hat-trick hero, Jeff Hurst, Sir Jeff Hurst. And it's, uh, I watched him do a piece for Sky Telly around what they were trying to do and the awareness they were trying to bring. And um, he got quite choked up, saying, you know, we'd meet up every now and again, we'd go to dinners, we'd speak at dinners, we'd, we'd do charity work. Um, you know, my teammates are not around anymore. But it, it's like, um, I mean, I'm of an age where I can remember all of these names. Nicola Brindley said, so is Jeff Astle's daughter. Is that, uh, is she called Dawn Nicola? It's just being hidden by the, the heart on my, uh, on my TV screen. So Jeff Astles, remember him? And the boys of 66, five players though. I mean, what, is, is that just coincidence? 11 of our greatest heroes of this land and have gone with dementia.